Hey everyone, Ellery the Health Adventurer here, and I apologize for the sort of dark lighting right now. I've got actually some candles going on. Um, I have been doing a new thing where I've been going to bed um, closer to the sunset and then actually rising right around sunrise, which is one thing that has um, really actually been helping me feel better. Um, it's Health is such a big picture thing. You can't just do one thing and expect that to just fix everything. You kind of have to look at the whole picture. So um, yes, raw veganism, by the way, now it's been six months. Um, six months and like three days. <laughs> so it's uh, the 24th, I believe, right now, and day after Thanksgiving. And um, I am super, super thankful for having found the raw vegan. Really, for me, I've been doing 100% fruit, so a fruitarian <laughs> diet. Um, it's been awesome. I have had some ups and downs um, through the whole process, and I kind of wanted to share some of those with you. Um, you know, if you're looking at getting into this diet and you're looking at what other people are experiencing, I just wanted to share with you my experience. So you kind of have some idea of what you might be getting into, and everyone's a little bit different. So um, I think it's really beneficial to listen to a lot of different people and to kind of piece together um, what is going on with, uh, you know, try to try to decipher um, what works for you. So um, as I've said, vegetables actually don't work for me. Um, and oh, you know what? I wanted to do a little update real quick. My last video, I think I left off saying I was thinking of doing maybe some sort of water fast. I was having some issues actually with my teeth, um, and I'm actually not really having those issues anymore. Um, so I did do some fasting. Um, I don't actually remember. I think I might have done 24 or 48 hours or something of a water fast, um, and I've done some other fasting here and there just kind of as my body's needed. You know, I try not to actually... Um, these days I really try not to force um, really much of anything, um, including fasting. I kind of just try to listen to my body and see what it needs. And if I feel sick and I just don't feel like eating and I don't feel well, I just won't eat then. And I just kind of trust that my body knows um, what's best for it in that case. So. Um, so anyway, uh, so I decided to, at that time though, I did decide to go ahead and just choose to do a fast. And um, I did that for a while, and then I started adding back in things like, <laughs> and this is not normally the way you get off a of fast. Well, actually, I think I, I got off that fast actually by drinking, um, this is not vegan, uh, bone broth. And I'd never had bone broth before. I just thought, hey, why don't I try it? Um, but what happened is, what, is it made me feel um, really depressed and fatigued. Like it felt similar. It felt like it was bringing on like old fatigue symptoms like if I had just been out in the sun. Um, and again, just to recap, um, for those of you who are new to my channel and just landing on this video, um, I had been dealing with things like lupus, scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, could have even been some MS, and I didn't actually get, mind you, I did not get any of these things actually diagnosed. I actually did not um, I got some blood testing that showed that I may have something like lupus. I had some low levels in C3C and C4C. Um, you can look that up if you're interested in the technical details of what that is. But um, I decided I was not going to go the conventional route in dealing with these things because I knew what was next. Um, my doctor made it pretty clear to me that if my test showed up the same um, on a retest um, three months later that she was going to do, um, that... I would be on some medication. So I really did not want to go that route. So I chose not to. Um, that was a while ago, actually, that I had those tests done. I haven't had any testing done in a while. Um, now I'm kind of interested if I am going to do testing to do it on my own through like an online lab, um, just to have the freedom of not having to interact or I don't want to end up in like an argument with the doctor. I mean, I could just go to the doctor and be like, well, doctor, I'm not going to take these medications that you're recommending me, but it just, it feels like it could be an awkward situation. So I, for now, I'm avoiding doing that. I've been through doctors my entire life. Um, if you want to read more about what my background is and what, um, what kind of led up to all this, 
Um, you can read about that on my website, thehealthadventure.com. Um, you can check out my bio on there and just see if I have a pretty long bio on there just detailing all of the things that I've done um, in the past, you know, from vegetarianism to paleo, um, just all those kinds of things and kind of how those worked or didn't work for me. Um, I will say, just to throw it in there, um, veganism did just alone help with my acne, um, but it did not, cooked veganism did not help with these other more serious neurological kind of issues. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's been really um, an interesting process the last six months, um, just detox and all these kinds of things that maybe if I didn't know that they were detox that I would be a little bit concerned. Um, speaking of detox, so I was talking about the teeth issues, I want to come back to that. Um, so, um, yeah, I was talking about fasting. I'm kind of like free associating here. Um, I'm not planning on editing this video. Um, I just want to get something out there because I haven't gotten anything out there in a while. Um, but anyway, so back to the fasting and back to the teeth issues. So I came off the fast, I did the bone broth, didn't feel really well. Um, so we talked about that. But then after that, I also started, I wanted to stay away from fruit because I was afraid that it was affecting my teeth. And in a way, it kind of was, I think, but it may have actually been detox, which sounds strange, but I'll explain in a minute. So um, I did start adding in things like I was doing a lot of coconut, a lot of avocado, and I was pretty much like completely avoiding fruit as much as I could because I could not do vegetables without really triggering um, a really serious like thing with my where my hands would close up on me and they they just wouldn't be working properly so I was really afraid of trying more vegetables because I'd already tried a bunch and I wasn't gonna try more um, so I was adding in these things um, avocado coconut etc and it was working for like a little bit and my teeth were actually kind of feeling a little bit better um, but after a while I started noticing my stomach like I was it felt like I had rocks in it um, it was just too much fat. It was it was not good. Um, I think I started noticing more like candida type symptoms and it just it wasn't working out. So I, I was like, well, shoot, you know, I, I felt really stuck. So I just I just caved in. and I was like, I'm going to have fruit. Damn it. <laughs> so <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to have fruit. So I went ahead and I I ate my fruit again and Interestingly enough, like I had a little bit of like tooth sensitivity at first and then it seemed to go away. So I don't, I don't know. Now it seems like it's pretty good. Maybe every now and again, I'll just notice like a little twinge or something like that. But I feel like it could have just been acidic detox. And what was happening was I was just slowing the detox down with those other things. Um, that's kind of going along the lines of Dr. Robert Morris's theory. Um, Dr. Robert Morris is really great if you want to check him out. Um, but something else interesting I wanted to share as well, um, because a lot, a lot, a lot of raw vegans out there really, really emphasize the vegetables. And this is something that had, I guess maybe that might have been influencing me trying all these different vegetables, despite the fact that none of them were working for me. It didn't matter if it was nightshades, root vegetables, um, greens, like just none of them were working for me. Okay. So, um, you know, and we have been ingrained since like we're born that we need to be eating our vegetables. So it makes sense that I would continue to try to incorporate them. So, um, so basically everyone says that vegetables are good for you. You need to have them in your raw vegan diet. Or you're going to have a bunch of problems. You're going to break your bones. You're going to lose your teeth. Da, 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 da. And the only person who does not say this is Dr. Robert Morse. And, um, he is kind of been the only one to really explain that people with neurological issues, um, if you watch, uh, his, he's got some videos on autism and multiple sclerosis, um, where he talks about this, that people with neurological issues really need the higher vibration. They need that, the fruit. They need that fructose. Um, he believes that fructose is a superior uh, sugar to glucose. Um, so that's where he's coming from. I don't know if if that is what it is or if it's anti-nutrients in the vegetables or whatever. I, I really have no idea. Um, but it's an interesting, um, it's interesting that he is saying that, that, you know, he works with a lot of people that come through his clinic. And if he's noticing that that's consistent, 
um, you know, <laughs> then I think that's something to pay attention to and it's something to talk about. Um, there is another uh, raw vegan on YouTube. Her name is Texas Fruitarian. And she is, she has, or had multiple sclerosis, and that was a couple of years ago. And she found that she, it seemed like she needed to do mostly fruit and kind of less vegetables. That's something that she noticed over time. But um, she still does leafy greens, she still, she still does non-sweet fruits, I can't even do those. Um, and it seems like she does have, she actually does incorporate some root vegetables sometimes, like uh, carrots, but she, I did read in one of her comments, so it's, an, um, she, it might have even been a response to one of mine, uh, where she said something about, like, vegetables seem to slow down her healing process. So, what I have to say about vegetables is, <laughs> they can work really great for some people, and for others, I think particularly those probably with neurological issues, they probably should avoid raw vegetables. Um, I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, <laughs> just a disclaimer, but um, if you're looking at this kind of a path and you're, you know, interested in trying something alternative, um, it's that's what seems to be kind of like consistent um, from just like I said, Dr. Morse and um, Texas Fruitarian and then obviously my own experience. So. Um, yeah, just something to consider, but uh, for all of us, we really have to pay attention to what's working for our bodies and what's not, regardless of what other people are saying. Um, you know, for example, vegetables don't work for me, um, but if you just listen to me and my experience, um, you know, my boyfriend, for example, he seems to do really well um, with vegetables, and he's dealing with, like, a lot of, he's had a lot of accidents, and he had a recent um, injury, um, a car accident fairly recently, so he's got a lot of pain from that, and it seems like, and he's still taking, he has to take pain medication, um, because it seems to help him sleep, and if he's not able to sleep, um, so again, there's always that balance too with, you know, the conventional approaches as well, um, and there are some cases where the conventional route, um, it might be good to, you know, start there, or, um, taper off from that if that's where you already are. So everyone is really, really different. Um, and that's what makes it kind of difficult to figure out, um, you know, what's going to work <laughs> because we're all so different. And that's why we really have to strive as much as we can and which, as much as we have time and energy available to seek our own path. Um, but again, hopefully some of this information helps you. Um, so anyways, so he's got, you know, his pain medication, um, that he takes, and it seems like at first, now this is kind of interesting, um, doing fruit for him was actually kind of like canceling out the, uh, pain medication. <laughs> so, um, but now, for some reason, it does not anymore. I don't know if it's just he's gotten used to it, or I, I'm not really sure. Um, but now it does not cancel out his pain medication, um, but at first the raw vegetables were helping him actually experience less pain because what was happening with the fruit is he would experience more pain. So that could have also been kind of a detox type of a symptom. That can happen. You can have increased pain um, from detox. But anyways, he's trying to lower his pain, so it wasn't working out. And um, the raw vegetables were actually helping a little bit more. So um, that's kind of an, a good example of of an incident where you'd say yeah like definitely you know you might want to incorporate some vegetables and also yeah if you got some maybe uh deficiencies like iron or um maybe calcium um i'm trying to think what else but yeah some mineral deficiencies might maybe it would be appropriate for that um but that's just something that you're gonna have to figure out um you know for yourself and see what works for you um, but yes, I am also thinking about mineral deficiencies, like am I going to end up with mineral deficiencies? This is something that um, people who advocate against not doing 100% fruit, because there are a lot of people, and a lot of people that I actually um, trust and respect, so it's, you know, when I hear these people say that, I do have like concern, I'm like, okay, like maybe I do need some other minerals. Um, I was taking some green powders that were actually working for me, which was kind of surprising that, you know, some sort of vegetable was working for me. Um, it was, I don't know if it's kind of like, it's not cooked, but maybe dehydrated or something. Um, but it's definitely not raw either. So those were working pretty well for me. It seems like right now my body, 
I don't know how I feel about taking them. I, I kind of wanted to try the 100% pure fruit, um, kind of the Dr. Robert Morris approach, no supplements and that sort of thing. Um, so that's what I'm going with right now, uh, but I am open to changing that, especially um, when it comes to making sure and knowing, feeling confident that I had enough vitamins and minerals, especially considering that fruit and other vegetables are not necessarily, uh, they're not always, the commercial ones are not uh, going to be as high in nutrients necessarily as ones that you might grow yourself and you're conscious of the soil health and all of that. So um, I'm not quite there yet with being able to garden and everything. Um, so I'm still relying on commercial fruit at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's something I'm thinking about. Um, I may want to do some sort of liquid supplements for that, uh, just so I don't necessarily have to do even the green powders and just do that kind of a version of it. But I always prefer to get things like in food, some sort of food or <laughs> I don't know if you can call green powder a food but it is it's basically a food so um, yeah I'm kind of looking into that though I was taking a uh, it was raw calcium uh, garden of life raw calcium supplement um, but I learned that the was it the yeast or something that that are creating the uh, I think I think the vitamin D the vitamin D3 is coming from like yeast or something I, I don't know what it is um, but they're like fed sheep wool or something, something weird. So it, yeah, it just, it seemed kind of like it was a little bit too synthetic sounding, but it might be better than, you know, I'm not getting any sun right now. And actually that is one thing I'm still dealing with. So my hands are feeling better. Um, what other symptoms was I having? Just the fatigue and stuff like that. But uh, the sun is still a trigger for me, so I have to be really, really careful. Um, if It seems like if I go outside during sunset, sunrise, where the sun's kind of low, or if it's very overcast, um, that it's okay for me, but I don't know. The sun is... I, I do wonder if the sun is actually triggering a detox, but I don't want to really play around with it too much. Um, I'd prefer to just stick with the fruit, <laughs> um, seeing that my hands have improved and I've had all these other kinds of improvements um, since going raw vegan, fruitarian. Um, yeah, I just, I, I don't like getting setbacks. I mean, it's possible even the vegetables could be triggering a detox. It's really hard to know. It's really hard to know if it's detox or retox. So that's why this whole thing is, it's kind of, it is experimental, um, but at the same time, there's a lot of people that have done this, and they've done this lifestyle, and um, they've had really great results with it. So, um, and I also am looking at, you know, working with possibly somebody who's more in the raw vegan mindset, like um, Dr. Rick Dina seems like somebody who, um, he's, a, he's a doctor of chiropractic, but he definitely has a lot of clinical experience um, with lab work and blood work, and has seen a lot of raw vegan um, blood work, over the course of um, working at a fasting facility, a water fasting facility called True North. Um, so he's somebody who would be probably good to work with um, for blood work if I want another perspective other than a traditional uh, medical doctor. Um, so that's something I'm considering. He doesn't seem to advocate the high fruit diet though, um, but that might be okay because maybe there are some setbacks to the high fruit diet overall. It's just that it may be key for detox for conditions like mine. So it may not be a good long-term plan, um, but it may be something that, you know, somebody like him might have a better idea of what happens when you do fruit only or something like that. Um, but I will say Dr. Morse's perspective of deficiencies is that and you know, maybe this is too much of a generalization, but it is an important consideration, is that um, it has more to do with utilization than not getting enough, or, it, or something like absorption or something like that. So malabsorption or uh, a lack of proper utilization of those minerals. So we have um, a bunch of hormones and actually, um, I guess, our um, adrenal glands produce like 50 hormones for the body, which is a lot. So it's got a pretty big job. <laughs> so, um, and then when we get stressed out and stuff, we're really taxing 
our adrenal glands, like it's no wonder stuff gets out of whack. There can be a lot of issues um, that you can have just because your adrenal glands are out of whack, including neurological ones, including even things like diabetes. So, um, and again, you can look at all of Dr. Robert Morris's videos. He gets into the really technical stuff. I love his videos for that. <laughs> he gets really technical. Um, but anyway, um, so utilization. Um, utilization is, uh, so, so the adrenal glands are responsible for a lot of things, for example. Um, but there's something like it produces a hormone called aldosterone that um, regulates sodium. And um, if calcium is an issue, for example, there can be an issue associated with the parathyroid gland because the parathyroid gland, <clears throat> the parathyroid gland is, excuse me, responsible for um, calcium utilization. So um, those are things to consider. So the, the, they're not, we don't have like a, a, a set amount. I know people maybe tend to think that because we have these, the RDA that says, oh, this is the amount that we should get every day of this mineral or that. Um, but with minerals, um, it doesn't really work that way. It's not just like you get this amount in every, you have to get that amount in every single day. Um, there's kind of, there's like a regulation that goes on and that has to do with um, our, our hormones. So there can be a lot tied into that, but is that to say that we should never supplement though, especially if we have been severely deficient on maybe those minerals and we haven't been utilizing them really very well. Um, I don't know. I mean, some people say that we can get addicted to supplements. Um, I know Foley Rock Christina is one of those people that tends to say that. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that it's hard to say, like, should we take supplements or should we not? Or should we just focus on like taking herbs to, um, kind of support those, those glands that might be weak, like the adrenal glands. Um, and the parathyroid and things like that. So, um, so those are things that I'm considering for myself. Um, and it just, it kind of depends too on like, if I do some blood work, do some checkups and see where things are at and I see like, gosh, you know, like, you know, this is not looking real good or I do some sort of like, I don't know, bone density test and it's like looking really bad then. <laughs> or if my teeth start looking really brittle, which would be really bad, um, or transparent, I guess, um, then I would be maybe kind of concerned. So, um, so yeah, but overall everything is going quite well. Um, I'm just always, always, always thankful, um, that my hands are working properly. That was the biggest thing for me. <laughs> um, the fatigue was really mad and everything. Um, I guess especially like after being exposed to the sun, um, that would be really bad. It would last like for days. Now, you know, if I do ex get exposed to sun, um, it's, it's not, it doesn't seem to last as long. So there's always those kinds of improvements. I do notice stress is a trigger. Lack of sleep is a trigger for me. Um, actually changing my schedule, my sleep schedule over to this um, sunset to sunrise type of schedule, which is really, really great. I'm really glad I did it. Um, but the transition was really bad because um, I, I did pull an all-nighter and um, that really actually messed me up the way that I did it. So it would have been better to do a more gradual thing. Um, I kind of tried to do the gradual thing and it just wasn't working. Maybe it was too gradual. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of brutal doing the all-nighter thing. I, I used to be able to do that all the time. Um, well, this time it really actually triggered some, some of those old, uh, symptoms a little bit, like with my hands, not as much though, um, as like eating vegetables, <laughs> but, um, it did trigger some of those things a little bit and I just, I just felt really bad. So, um, so yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to get to bed soon now. So, um, thank you all for watching. Um, I just want to give you this update and, uh, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do more, more videos um, on this channel soon. I've been, I did some more on Periscope if you want to check out, um, some of my previous videos. Um, I think I, d I decided I don't want to transfer, um, Periscope videos necessarily to YouTube anymore. It's just the quality doesn't really seem to, uh, translate. I just want to keep those separate. Um, I'd actually rather just repeat information that I said on Periscope and bring it over here and, 
Um, it's just they're different formats, um, and the live the live uh, element is a little bit different as well. So, um, so anyways, um, and you can always go to my website, thehealthadventure.com. I also have some blogs there. I have a couple recipes actually. Um, that's something else you're gonna want to look out for. I've been um, having a little bit of fun with that, even though I'm not eating uh, vegetables. Um, I've been using. Uh, I've been kind of doing these uh, recipes for my boyfriend, and he's been really enjoying them. Um, so I'm probably going to do a little ebook at some point soon. So, anyways, uh, subscribe, like if you like, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.